um, a very good morning, a very good afternoon to you, wherever you're watching us from, and a very, very happy new year to you. Happy 23 and happy Sabbath. We are so delighted to have you with us on this very first Sabbath of 2023 and uh, with me here I have uh, my fellow brothers and uh, one of us is uh, just on the way and he'll be joining us very soon and uh, before we go into that I would like to welcome you all to this very first lesson, very first Sabbath of 2023 and uh, we are very delighted and we are coming to you live from Seventh New Life, Seventh Day Adventist at Fifth Ngong Avenue. And uh, before we get into the introductions, I'd like us to have a word of prayer and I'll invite uh, my fellow guest who's here with us just to pray for us. Then we can start with the introductions. Over to you, Elder. Uh, let's pray. <clears throat> Our Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for your mercies upon us. Thank you for giving us life this day. And thank you for loving us so much that, Lord, you could allow us to come to you even though we are sinners. Lord, on this Sabbath day, I will pray that you bless each one of us. And even as we are going to study your word, especially during this lesson study, that we are beginning a new quarter, Lord, we pray that you lead us. And let us learn at your feet for this humble prayer in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Um, to our online viewers, um, my name is Irene Jahenda, and I will be the moderator for the lesson today. And um, I'd like uh, my fellow elder who's here with me just to introduce uh, himself to us so that uh, we can start with the discussions today. Elder? Thank you very much, my sister. My name is Elder Jared Manyara. I'm a member of this church, and today I'm one of the panelists during this lesson study. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much for the introduction. Um, to the members of the church who are just joining us, I'd uh, like to inform us that uh, there are classes that are ongoing in the sanctuary. Just feel free to join uh, any of the classes that has less number of people for you just to partake in this particular lesson. For the online community, we want to welcome you to this discussion today. And... Um, I would like to start just uh, by highlighting to us that um, previously uh, we, we had a, a, a topic and a discussion in the previous quarter that was touching on death, dying, and the future hope, which was uh, very interesting and uh, very informative. And for this particular quarter uh, of uh, the beginning of 2023, we are moving on to a different topic and a different uh, area of discussion, and which is and uh, the managing for the master till he comes. Managing for the master till he comes. Um, I don't know uh, to you, Elder, because uh, when I, I hear this particular topic, when I think about it, I'm thinking of um, managing for the master till he comes. How are we controlling? How are we taking charge of uh, resources um, that have been handed over to us by, of course, the master until his second coming? So it's um, around matters of stewardship, matters of controlling and taking charge of what he has given us. I don't know what comes to you, what comes to your mind when uh, this particular topic is under discussion and many Elder. Okay, thank you very much, my sister. <clears throat> um, when you hear the term managing, there are two parties. There is the owner of something, and there is the manager of this something. So let's take the example of a company. We have the owners who normally we call shareholders and who expect to get a dividend at the end of the year from their investment. Then there are those people who have been uh, employed to manage. 
starting with the board of the company, with the chairman and board members, and then we have the management that run day-to-day -day affairs of the company. Now, when we come to our sense as Christians, we have God as the owner of everything. When we look at the book of um, Psalms, chapter 24, verses 1, the Bible tells us that the earth and everything in it belongs to God. So we see the honor here. And then here, we are the managers, the creatures whom God created. And we can see this in the book of uh, Genesis chapter 1, verses 27 and 28. When we were created, we were created to have dominion over God's creation. So, from the word go, when we were created, we were said to be managers of God's resources. And in this quarter, we are going to see that <clears throat> the manager will come at the end of time. Just like the investors in a company, they, they are not in the company every day to see what's going on. But at the end of the year, <laughs> there will be an annual general what, meeting yes. where the managers must do what? Account for what they have done. So, the owner of the resources on earth, who is God, at the end of time, he will come and we will give an account. So this quarter, we are going to see how are we to manage God's resources on a day-to-day -day basis, month-to-month, year-to-year, until he comes. And there are several aspects that we'll be looking at, like uh, dealing with debt, tithing, uh, covetousness, managing in tough times, faithfulness, for the, uh, um, the reward of faithfulness, if we become faithful, what will be the reward that we'll get at the end of the day? And that's where you find that managers get a bonus in a company at the end of what? Of the, the year. Of the year. Thank you very much, my Thank sister. Thank you so yeah. much, Elder Manyara. Yes. That was very, very insightful. I mean, um, it's a great role to be a manager. It's something that uh, you cannot overlook or underplay. It's a very vital role. So um, I would like to welcome our second panelist. Um, I will let him introduce himself because before he can just um, tell us uh, exactly what he thinks about uh, this particular topic of uh, this quarter, uh, the first uh, quarter of the year. So over to you. Uh, thank you so much. I'm Elder Opere Nyaroya, an elder in this church, and I'm grateful to be here and to salute you. Happy New Year and good news. Thank you so much. Yes, thank you uh, so much. Uh, thank you. On what you have said, my sister, mm -hmm. on what uh, my thoughts are on this lesson managing for the master till it comes. Yes. One thing which I found very much profound is that, uh, like my brother Manyara said, there is a very big um, uh, connection which the Bible wants us to learn on how to relate with the resources the honor has put in our hands. Sometimes there is a tendency or a temptation to relate with them in such a way that we may think we are the owners until we forget that there is somebody who is the real owner and we are just custodians. And I realize that because of that, the Bible has spent a lot of time. Actually, there are only around 500 verses, around 500 verses in the Bible, about 500 verses on prayer and a little fewer than 500 verses on faith. But when it comes to money, there are over 2,350 verses dealing with money. So when you take the verses talking on faith, <laughs> prayer combined and nearly love, there are still fewer than <laughs> the verses 
on money or even material possession. Why is that key like that? It be, therefore means there is a very big correlation between our relationship with the owner and the things he has put in hands. So that is what I've realized that what I uh, perceived in this lesson that God has a special message to you and me in this quarter so that we can truly understand the relationship we need to cultivate between us and him and the things he has put in our hands lest we get deceived and we attach ourselves to the resources put in our hands as if they are our own. Thank you. Thank you so much for that, Elder Opere. I mean, um, there's something that you are touching on in terms of cultivating um, our relationship with God and uh, how exactly that looks like in terms of uh, how we're we relating with God, how we're we relating with the items and the resources uh, that He's put for us and made available for us here on earth as we wait for Him. And uh, that just uh, helps us move to the to the first lesson of uh, of this particular quarter which is around um part of god's family i mean um we say that human beings are social beings and uh we tend to have that uh social belonging or wanting to belong somewhere or attached to someone and i don't know how this looks like on your end because um, when i think about it uh when we talk about god he's the king of kings he's the lord of lords and uh, when you're being associated to a king you're of royalty you're of a uh, high caliber and uh, that should make us as human beings carry ourselves um with very high standard as christians so i don't know um i can just put a question to you in terms of uh, uh, this particular topic of the quarter, the first uh, lesson, uh, part of God's family, and how does it look like uh, on your end, Elder Opere? Uh, thank you. Part of God's family, as you put it, when uh, it, it gives, you've said, when it is a family, there is uh, some tenets which must be put. That is, we are together, we care for one another. There is love, there is mutual understanding as part of family members. And so when it is said we are part of God's family, what does that one bring into our mind? The Bible tells us in the 1 John 3, 1, Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us, that we should be called children of God. What does that one bring to our mind? It brings that... God has bestowed upon us special responsibility and events that do not look at us as aliens, but as members of we, people who are part and parcel of the family. And so, as members, members of the family, there are some responsibilities which are required of you and me. As a member of the family, you are expected to behave in such some way to be custodians of one another. But now, in this case, and as Elder had said, that even at creation we saw, God created, but then left us to continue. Engineers usually say, we, as engineers we usually say, that God created. <laughs> then after creation, he left for the engineers to continue. <laughs> Why do we say that? He said in the beginning, he said, let there be light. That was electrical engineering. <laughs> he continued the civil engineering. And when he made man, that was mechanical. But the point here we are seeing as God's family is that God gave Adam the responsibility to multiply, to name, and also to tend. That one was a responsibility which is bestowed on a member who is part and parcel of the family. Therefore, there are also responsibilities required of him or required of you and me as members of the family. We must understand how are we part of God's family? How are we? When we have understood how we are part of God's family, where it is said we are now called the children of God, then that one should be trigger something in our minds to let us know how we should behave and what we should do.
Okay. Thank you. So I think that one brings a high degree of responsibility after you've understood my brother Manyara, who you are as a member of God's family, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. Then you know your mind changes. How am I going to behave? What therefore is required of me? Thank you. Okay, I just want to add something. Eh? Yes, please. Yes. We are part of God's family. Yes, we are. But then sometimes we feel as aliens. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we could be in the house, but we feel as what? Aliens. Aliens. What sometimes can make us feel as aliens? When we are not living as per the requirements or the tenets of that family. Mm -hmm. That's true. And sin is one of the things that makes us to feel as aliens. But the beautiful message the Bible gives us in John chapter 1 verse 12 is that but as men as received him to them gave he power to become sons of God mm -hmm. even to them that believe on his name. There sometimes you feel like you are not part of it but when you receive Christ you become part of God's family. Just want to give us more illustration. Yes, please. Over uh, the, uh, the whole days, I traveled up country and I had a number of my nephews and nieces. Sometimes my daughter could run and uh, embrace me and say, My dad, when the parents of these other children are not around, they could also come and uh, try to embrace me. And then my daughter tries to fight them. <laughs> then I tell them, No you share dad so you are all my children and they could feel good and i could embrace all of them and that's how god is sometimes even those of us who are christians we feel like those who are sinners are not part and parcel of this even when they come to the fold to the family we don't want to embrace them but when all of us receive christ we become part and parcel of God's family. Yes, I Amen. really concur with that, um, Elder Manyara, and uh, it's because um, I can just draw it from the illustration you've given us that uh, when when the when your child came and she felt a sense of belonging, and the others felt really left out. I mean, um, it's part of our responsibility as uh, Christians just to be able to do away with the uh, ethnicity, with the uh, with the uh, racism, with the any form of uh, destruction that comes against us as Christians and as brothers and sisters. We should view ourselves as brothers and sisters in the Lord, in Christ, and uh, be able to live together in harmony. I mean, um, that's just the gist of it and the beauty about it in terms of being able to be part of God's family and even for members uh, or Christians who are not uh, Adventist. Also, it is part of our responsibility just to be able to embrace them as children of God. I think um, with that, we can just move on to the next um, topic and uh, this goes to the Monday part in terms of um, being able to describe um, God is the owner of everything and I would like Elder Manyara just to take us through this um, what comes to mind or what entails uh, the fact that we are saying God is the owner of everything thank you very much <clears throat> this um part of Monday, God is the owner of everything, is just reminding me of something. Sometimes as human beings you could be walking around and you see something and uh, you ask someone, whose piece of land is this? Whose car is this? You want to know who is the owner. owner. Yes. As Christians, do we know who is the owner of the resources on earth. Mm -hmm. um, parents experience something very interesting. You can buy bananas. You get home. <laughs> you place them maybe on the worktop in the kitchen. A child comes, picks it. And when they, they pick the bananas, you ask them, whose bananas are these? They will say they are mine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 
they don't know who brought the bananas but they just grab them mm -hmm. and they become what the owners as christians do we know who is the owner of everything on earth if you look at the book of psalms chapter 50 verses 10 to 12 christ to uh, uh, the bible tells us about the beasts of the forest belonging to god the cattle in a thousand hills belong to him psalms 24 verse 1 the bible tells us that the earth and everything in it belongs to god Haggai chapter 2 verse 8 all the silver and gold belong to who to god to god now <clears throat> who are we <laughs> so what belongs to us those verses are clearly telling us that god is the owner of everything so we shouldn't at any one moment claim to own anything actually including our what? ourselves ourselves yes yes <laughs> yes very true you remember some time back when people said my dress my my, my choice. choice my choice my body i can feed it on anything it is my what there is nothing everything belongs to god and actually we get one of the um <coughs> sorry sorry <coughs> one of the patriarchs in the bible <coughs> david we know him as one of the kings he desired <coughs> to build a temple for God. <coughs> and they sought <coughs> a consultation with Nathan the prophet. <coughs> and the prophet was very kind. He said, to all that is in your heart, for God is with you. <coughs> <coughs> but <coughs> what happened what happened <clears throat> was that because David <clears throat> had <clears throat> had shed so much blood he was a man of war God could not allow him he only allowed his son to do what to carry out the, the construction to carry out work. the construction <clears throat> <clears throat> but David sought to gather building materials and <clears throat> when they gathered all the materials <clears throat> and the materials now were ready <clears throat> he had to give a thanksgiving to god <clears throat> and what is so profound that after gathering all this <clears throat> yeah he did not behave like the, the way the politicians behave. Mimi ni meleta elf kumi. I have brought 10,000 <laughs> Kenya shillings. I have brought this. This is my what? My, my own what? Contribution. Words. Contribution. Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah? And I've given this. I've also considered this. I also felt this. I also gave. You know, <clears throat> they feel like they own everything. Yes. What David did. And this is what he said that <clears throat> but who am I mm -hmm. and who are my people that we should be able to offer so willingly as this <clears throat> he was asking who am I he was acknowledging that he belongs to God the people who brought the materials also belong to, to him to God. To also God belong to god <clears throat> and they ended by saying that they were returning to god that which belonged to him. to him do we acknowledge that even when we bring tithes and offerings we're simply 
returning to God what he has given us to manage. That's, that's Thank you very true. much. That's very true, Elder Manyara. In terms of uh, us as believers developing an attitude of uh, acknowledging the fact that whatever resources that we have, um, all are, they all belong to God. I am just having a scenario in my head whereby um, um, most of the times when, when you get a child and probably you are handing over a piece of cake or something and uh, they tend to keep it to themselves and know that uh, I am the one possessing this, this is mine. Uh, but we are looking at it in terms of uh, understanding that uh, whatever it is, whatever material, whatever resources that are available all belong to God, including ourselves. Right? So I would like to just... Um, uh, welcome uh, the viewers just uh, joining us at this particular point. Uh, we are doing the first uh, lesson of the quarter, which is around managing for the master until he comes. So uh, feel very welcome. And uh, for those also who've been here in this particular discussion and session, uh, feel free to just... Uh, Share your mind, share your thoughts uh, in the comment section and uh, be able to ask questions that uh, our elders will be able to answer. And uh, just from that, I would like to pose a question to Elder Opere in terms of being able to highlight to us. Um, any family needs resources, right, Elder? Yes. And um, what are some of these resources that are available? for God's family. Now that we've acknowledged that uh, we are all part of God's family and uh, we are acknowledging the fact that family, we need resources to operate. What are some of these resources that are available for us as uh, God's family? Uh, thank you so much. I think that is a very pertinent question which needs to be even be taught much more in this in the church, in this church. Yes. Why do I say that? God is the one as we elders we have read from psalms 24 is the honor of everything including you and myself it's for, because he says in corinthians for you you not know that you you are not of your own so after understanding that first of all we are not of our own even us we belong to god then it is very important also for people to be taught something which i would say <coughs> wealth creation Wealth creation, wealth management, and multiplication. You know, many a times, uh, wealth itself, all these resources are not bad. But we should be able to understand what is it that is available for us. There is wealth which is available for us as members of God's family. And the, the wealth which is available for, available for us are both temporal and spiritual. What do I mean? God has given us resources even to sustain us in this life which we call material, which are temporal because, of course, we are using them in the times in which we live. And we are supposed to live even for our generations to come. So it is important to understand the resources which are available for us as members of God's family and for what purpose. What I would say first, these resources are available to us, are many. And for what reason are they available for us? So number one, we have both what I would call material and spiritual resources. Temporal and eternal resources. The material resources are the ones which you and I need for sustenance. For propagation, uh, which we need for our sustenance. For living, to live and to do our business, money. We need money, we need food, we need clothing, we need housing, we need cars. All those are material blessings, resources which God has bestowed to us. Because Deuteronomy said, it is God who gives us the ability to make wealth. Number two, which is very key, and it is intertwined with the material one, is the spiritual. One, we know that when sin had come, when before sin, God had given Adam and Eve three responsibilities as co-workers with him. But when sin came, God sought to restore that responsibility, that 
relationship. And Christ came and bridged that gap. Now, we have been given other resources, spiritual resources, which include, first of all, the greatest of it, Jesus Christ. The gift of salvation through Jesus Christ. So that that initial plan of God may be restored as members of family. Because we were created as members of family, where Adam and Eve had got face-to-face conversation with God. But now, sin distorted, like Elder was saying, sin distorted that. But now, we got a greatest gift, the gift of salvation through Jesus Christ. Then, you realize how God is still gracious to us as members of his family, even as a church. He has given us the Spirit because he said, I will send you the teacher, the counselor, the Holy Spirit. The Godhead in the person of the Holy Spirit is also still with us to teach us, to guide us, to overcome sin. And then, even as a church, he has gone ahead to give us spiritual gifts so that this church may not be effective, in, may not be ineffective, but we may be effective. Now the question we should ask ourselves, why has he given us all these resources? Apart from our daily temporal sustainability, we have also gotten the other aspect of the spiritual. That one, our relationship with him may be restored. As members of God's family, which had been mad because of sin, we have been given the gift of salvation in Jesus Christ, which we receive by faith. Salvation by faith. And then now, we are also given the, in the presence of the Holy, uh, Holy Spirit, the presence of the Godhead. And then we also have spiritual gifts. My dear, that is why you and I are able to teach now. Other people Indeed. will be coming to sing because they have been endowed. They have been with the given spiritual gifts yes. so that we, the body of Christ, may be strengthened. And then that one brings to mind for what reason? So that you, for the spiritual gift and all this, the work of God may be propagated. Now that the relationship had been distorted, God desires that this relationship be restored. And how can it be restored? Through the use of these gifts and resources he has put in our hands, both material and spiritual. That is um, very true, and it's uh, so delightful and so encouraging uh, of the gifts and the materials that have been provided to us. I mean, the gift of salvation, the Holy Spirit, and when you come to talk about it, it's not only material uh, resources that have been given unto us, but spiritual mm -hmm. resources and gifts that have been bestowed on us. And they say that uh, to whom much is given, much, much is, is expected and that uh, is a lot of responsibility on our side and uh, with that I would like um, Elder Manyara just to take us to the next uh, you are not limited do you desire to get more resources be it spiritual and material mm -hmm. the question is for what reason but we can ask the giver who is ready to give us exceedingly much more Thank you. Amen. Thank you so much for that insight, Elder Opere. <laughs> Probably we can just move on to Elder Manyara <laughs> uh, for the interest of time also, just to take us through the Wednesday part mm. in terms of the responsibilities we have as uh, God's family members. Okay, thank you very much. <clears throat> I just want to pick it from where Elder Opere has left it, that some may say, okay, Others have cars, I don't have a car. Others have a big piece of land I don't have. But <clears throat> I just want to mention this one gift that El Dobere mentioned. Nobody will be given more eternal life than another one, irrespective <laughs> of how much you do it. <laughs> yes. Or much you possess. You have, yes. All of us will have eternal life. life. Yes. Not more. Or less. 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 So let's be contented mm -hmm. with what we have. Mm -hmm. Even when we remember the parable of the talents, God bestowed different <coughs> quantities of talents. Yes. And at the end of the day, he gave a reward to the faithful servants. Yes, he did. Now, 
we need to understand that the resources are available to us Amen. and we have received them now what is our responsibility over these resources that we have we remember <clears throat> that god gives us everything and he has put us to be what stewards mm -hmm. um <clears throat> i still want to give an illustration of a child uh, children are very interesting uh, people and i do learn a lot from them many times <clears throat> When I give something to a child, they remember the Kata's words they learn in preschool. They say, thank you. thank you. My own children embrace me and say, you are the best dad <laughs> in the world. <laughs> yeah? Yes. There is a response. Now God has given us something. He expects a response of love from us so how do we show that response of love in the positions that god has given us the bible <coughs> tells us that we demonstrate our love for god by keeping his commandments john 14:15 if you love me it's a conditional eh? <laughs> if you love me mm -hmm. keep my word my commandments, my commandments. Yeah. so as members of god's family yes. as we enjoy the spiritual blessings <clears throat> and feeling good about all these blessings we need to love god with all our hearts with all our soul with all our mind that we should not have our love for god divided the love that we have for god should not go to anything else god has given us family we have parents we have children we have spouses we shouldn't share god's love without what that you put god second to your child or second to your spouse or second to who? to your parent yes. or second to your property or second to your academics that the academics become number one yes. we should give total love and when that happens all these other things will come <clears throat> i know someone who said one time that we shouldn't give tithe to god if we are not given money to our parents so that means we put parents before what for god, god. Yes. matthew 6 33 says what seek ye first what the kingdom of god then and the rest shall be added, added unto you. you if you give to god mm -hmm. god provides what you will give to your parents amen mm -hmm. if you love god in totality he will make you excel mm -hmm. in school if you love god and give to him what belongs to him he will give you enough money to acquire the properties that you want to have yeah. genesis chapter 13 we know the father of faith abraham mm. the bible says he was very he rich. was not just rich mm. but very, very what rich. very rich very rich and we see abraham giving tithe so <clears throat> it is very important for us to keep the commandments of god as administration of our love for him i know sometimes people say okay um when we come to god and when we accept salvation commandments become what irrelevant mm -hmm. yeah that is legalism mm. but <clears throat> it only becomes legalism if you keep commandments as a way of earning salvation mm -hmm. but if you are keeping the commandments because you have been saved then that is not what legalism yes. <clears throat> it is important mm -hmm. to learn mm -hmm. um as jesus said mm -hmm. that those who hear and do god's words are likened to a wise what builder 
who built his house upon the rock. So when we hear and do God's words, we are wise builders who have built their houses upon what? Upon the, rock. the rock. For we know that when storms come, they will not do what? They will not shake us. They will not shake us. As God's family members to demonstrate our love for him through keeping the commandments. Third means we are following the instructions that he has given us. That's Thank very you very true. much. That's very true. Thank you, Elder uh, Manyara. I mean, um, it's uh, so beautiful that uh, the responsibility that is bestowed unto us is actually loving each other and loving God mm -hmm. as we love ourselves and keeping and honoring the commandments um, that have been given to us. And uh, that is just our role in terms of uh, responsibility in this particular family. Um, with that, I would like to read some of the comments that are coming in. And uh, we, have, um, we have a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, thoughts and sharing that is on the uh, chat section. And I would, I would just like to sample a few. Uh, we have Kevin Mwangi, who's just commenting and saying that this is indeed such an amazing lesson. To start the year, we need to be very accountable to that which has been bestowed to us and equally to the time that we have to be responsible as well. Um, we have Happy New Year, Happy Sabbath coming in from uh, most members and I encourage you just to post in a question in case you have a, a question that uh, our elders will be able to to answer um, as we move on to the next part of the discussion and uh, getting into the Thursday section I would like to read for us a, a verse uh, of course in the book of Matthew chapter 6 verses 19 to 21 um, it says do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven whether, where neither moth nor rust will destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will also. Um, Eldo Perry, I don't know. Uh, you could just unpack for us uh, what this particular uh, verse is bringing to to us the information and uh, uh, just um, being able to reveal to us because this Thursday part is talking about treasures in heaven and just from this verse uh, of uh, Matthew chapter 6 verses 19 to 21 talking about um, not laying our treasures here on earth where moth and rust will destroy but rather laying our treasures in heaven. Thank you. I would like to add something on what Brother Echo, what Brother Manyara had said that um, when the Bible says what as a responsibility of members of the God's family, yes. he said that we <coughs> must realize that we, we show love <coughs> sorry, to God. And the Bible says with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your strength. And he brought it very well that the love to God is demonstrated in obedience. The love is demonstrated in obedience. As interestingly, that is how love is demonstrated. Love is demonstrated in obedience. Because if it, you love your wife, it means you are obedient and faithful. Love is demonstrated in obedience and faithfulness. So, as members of God's family who, <coughs> who have been... Uh, blessed and as managers we must demonstrate we must be demonstrate our love to God through obedience to his commands commands not only honor the Sabbath day which is also key honor your mother and father the fifth but commands in how to manage his resources his blessings so <clears throat> Like we read some time ago in the third quarter last year, that even the moral laws, how we behave, how we obey, obey the moral laws, the environmental laws. So when we love God, we will be responsible. How we obey is, we will demonstrate 
love to him through obedience to his laws, which guides how we operate, even with the resources. He says, 10% is mine. Even the rest which are remaining are even still his. <coughs> Thank you. Now, yes. as a family, with that, any responsible family will be cognizant of how they are using and channeling, how they are multiplying the wealth, how they are keeping the wealth, mm -hmm. and how they are managing the wealth. <coughs> if you are a family, you have a bank, you will reason, where are we going to keep our money? Even in today's world, you'll say, are we going to KCB? Are we going to equity? Are we going to an international bank or we are just going to a domestic bank? <laughs> you see, you will be concerned of how, where you, are, uh, where you are keeping your resources. How are you keeping them? How are you managing them? How are you generating and multiplying the wealth? So, as members of God's family, in Matthew chapter 6, verse 19 to 21, mm -hmm. told us that do not lay up for yourself treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourself treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. So you see... We are being, as members of God's family, who have been entrusted with both material and spiritual positions, we are being cautioned where should we keep them, where should we entrust them. We are told, even as we are here, we should be with a mind that we are not of this place. We should keep them, we should entrust them with God. Because you realize, uh, and Ella will tell you, even banks, which we feel are safer, because people keep the most trust, uh, treasured things in the banks, yeah. title deeds, <coughs> log books. Mm -hmm. But you realize that even those banks collapses. Even in this church, there is a time we had kept money in Chase Bank. And Chase Bank went under with our money. <laughs> with our money. <laughs> so, but now we are finding that we need to treasure it keep them where we are guaranteed. Meaning we need to prioritize the kingdom of God. God, our relationship with God needs to be a priority. Number one. So that we, it will guide by the way, one thing I realize with that knowledge, it will even dictate where we are, how we are handling our material positions. Where are, we, where are we keeping them? Where are we investing them? Yes. Because if you know you are a kingdom bound and you are a manager for God's kingdom, mm -hmm. I don't think you will take your money to go and keep it and buy shares in a, a tobacco farm no. or even alcohol farm, even if it is making a lot of return. Mm -hmm. It dictates because the kingdom of God is now priority one. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Elder. I just want to add something. Eh? Yes, please. <clears throat> Um, I remember some years back, I was listening to a lecture by an Indian professor. And he said something very interesting that shocked me. That he has never seen a, a foolish creature like a human being. <laughs> and the reason, he was referring to the tsunami that was in Asia. Mm -hmm. He said during the tsunami, no single animal died, but 120,000 human beings died. Right. And it is because they had kept their treasures on earth. People were struggling to move their household products, their vehicles. In fact, he said there was a warning 24 hours before the tsunami. Animals, including dogs, could drag children to safety. Now, this reminds us as human beings yeah. that when we keep our treasures in heaven, yes. we become wise. But when we and, uh, keep our treasures on earth, mm -hmm. we become what? Foolish. Foolish. And we end up doing what? Perishing. Because like if you put so much premium on your piece of land, if it is taken away, 
you get a shock heart attack you die mm -hmm. yeah that's so true. money will not mean anything mm. if we see what we have in fact as Ellen White was says in Christ object lessons mm -hmm. that money has a great value because it can do greater good in the hands of God's children it is food for the hungry drink for the thirsty clothing for the what for the naked mm -hmm. so we use these resources to bless ourselves bless others and advance God's work and that's how we keep our treasures in heaven, heaven. thank, thank you. you thank Amen. you um, Elder Perry I'll, I'll just cut you short just because of the interest of time <laughs> um, because I believe we can go on and yes. on and um, it's very interesting that you are being encouraged that uh, let's not focus on keeping the treasures here on earth, but rather being rich in heaven. Let's keep our resources uh, in heaven so that um, by the end of time, when, when, when Christ is coming, and uh, we will be very, very rich, I believe. Um, I would like to just uh, read a quote as we are winding up. And the, this quote is from Thoughts from the Mount of Blessings, page 110. And it says, um, if you have renounced self and given yourself to Christ, you are a member of the family of God. And everything in the Father's house is for you. All the treasures of God are opened to you, both the world that now is and that which is to come. The ministry of angels, the gift of his spirit, the labors of his uh, servants, all are for you. The world with everything in it is yours so far as it can do you good. So um, with this quote, I would like to give Elder Manyara a chance to just give a uh, closing remarks in just uh, less than a minute then uh, of course give it over to Elder Opere to also give his closing remarks as we come to the end of this discussion thank you very much <clears throat> I just want to say this that I'm delighted with today's lesson that I am part of God's family and there are resources that have been availed to me and for which I have responsibility and all that I have, I have, I need to keep it in heaven. And it's my prayer that all of us become part of God's family. And everything that God has becomes ours. And as we continue learning how to manage God's resources till he comes, uh, it is my prayer that we continue keeping at Jesus' feet. Thank you very much. Amen. Amen. Elder Perry. I realize, thank you so much, that um, you can give without loving, but you cannot love without giving. You can give without loving, but you cannot love without giving. Because money plays such a great, a unique role in scripture, it should come as no surprise that God uses our giving as a test of our commitment to him. So important it is this test that God considers it robbery when we refuse to give back. It is important for us to know we can give without loving, but we cannot love God without giving. And money and material position is such key in as a test of our relationship with God that God considers failure to be faithful as a robbery that one teaches us therefore that we need to really get transformed and understand as members of god's family our responsibility and the purpose for which these resources have been put in our hands it is god who gives us the ability to make wealth he is the one who gives us the ability to manage wealth he is also the one who gives us the ability to multiply or regenerate. May we seek wisdom from him who is the giver to help us be faithful to him. Thank you. 
Thank you. Thank you so much. I mean, this has been a lovely discussion, a wonderful discussion with the panelists here. I, uh, we could go on and on because the, the, the topic is vast and deep and uh, very, very interesting. So I would like to thank the viewers uh, who were able to join in in the discussion uh, for this particular first Sabbath and first uh, discussion of the quarter and I uh, would like to encourage you just to keep it here in terms of continuity with the program the Sabbath and also keep it here for continuity with the discussions uh, around the, the topics uh, this coming Sabbath. So with that I would like to wish uh, members a very happy Sabbath and uh, have a wonderful day as we continue with the program. Thank you very much and um, keep it here. Yes, yes. Uh, sorry for that. I think uh, we can end this with a word of prayer and I let me pray. <laughs> Uh, Heavenly Father, we want to thank you uh, for your mercy and your goodness each and every day of our lives. We want to thank you for this wonderful day that you've given us an opportunity, O oh God, to have this wonderful discussion as we enlighten in your word and what you have for us, O oh King of Glory. Thank you for the understanding that you've given unto us, O oh God, in terms of understanding this topic. And we want to invite you, O oh God, uh, Father, into the program of the day. May you guide us. May you bless us, O God. Bless the viewers. Bless the congregants, O God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, Lord, as we continue with this discussion, as we build up, O King of Glory, in the coming weeks, Father, Lord, may you give us the grace, the understanding that we need, O God. And Father, Lord, we want to just declare that you are Ebenezer and Father in our lives. It is in the mighty name of Jesus we pray, trusting and believing. Amen. Amen.